Okay, so in today's video, we're gonna see if it's actually possible to create an isometric grid in five seconds. <laughs> Any predictions? Hey guys, you're watching Dansky, the place to be to develop your creative skills. And in this tutorial, we're gonna see if it's actually possible to create an isometric grid in just five seconds. And then after, if you'd like to stick around for the fully comprehensive version, I will go through it in a bit more detail. But I had a comment the other day on one of my YouTube videos. Um, it was kind of funny. It suggested that the video was, I think, a bit too long, that it could have been done in five seconds. Like I'm paraphrasing, but the term five seconds was used and I thought, do you know what? Maybe I've had it wrong this whole time. Maybe my videos are too long. Five seconds is enough to create a fully thorough, comprehensive tutorial. So I thought, do you know what? Challenge accepted. So yeah, isometric grid, we're gonna do it in five seconds now. And then as I say, we'll do the fully comprehensive, longer version after, just in case you can't follow what's going on because it's, it's gonna be pretty quick. So we're gonna need to be able to time this. So I've got an iPhone here with a stopwatch and we'll get started. Okay, so we're gonna jump to the screen now and uh, yeah, isometric grid, five seconds. Is it possible? I've got no idea, but I'm gonna have fun finding out. So are you ready? Okay, let's get started now. Select the rectangular grid tool, click on the artboard, add an equal number of dividers, reduce the height by 86.602%, shear by minus 30, rotate by 30. And we're done. Okay, so did I do it in five seconds? Not quite. 6.92 seconds, so I tried my best. I'm sorry if you feel let down, if you feel misled. Um, I guess either I'm too slow, maybe I'm getting rusty, but uh, it seems that five seconds isn't enough to do a comprehensive tutorial on creating an isometric grid, but 6.92 seconds is. However, if you like the full version, then we're gonna jump back to the screen now. Don't worry, I'm gonna go through everything on how to create an isometric grid. Uh, it's not five seconds, but it is really, really quick and easy to do. So we'll jump to the screen now, that was fun. We'll jump to the screen now and uh, I'll show you how to do this. Okie dokie, so we're now in Adobe Illustrator. I have a new artboard, 1920 by 1080, if you're interested. And the first thing we're gonna do is go up to view, and all the way down to here. And we're going to turn off snap to pixel. Click to turn this off. Now the reason we turn this off is because we're creating an isometric grid. Sometimes snapping to the pixel in Illustrator is really useful. In this instance, we want to snap to just the point. And those points are gonna be the points on our isometric grid because an isometric grid doesn't follow a pixel grid always in the same way. So we've turned that off. Next, we're gonna go up here. You can see I have my rectangular grid tool. If you don't see this, which is quite likely, it's gonna be under your line segment tool. So just left click and hold, and then go down to rectangular grid tool. And we can go down here to the bottom of our color picker. Just set the fill to none. So we have a black stroke or outline. And we can just left click anywhere on the artboard. And you'll see this dialog box pop up. So now what we're gonna do is set the horizontal dividers and the vertical dividers. So we're gonna go for, well, let's just go for 100. You can change this to any number you like, but just make sure the numbers are the same. That's very important. And if we go up here as well, this is the physical size of your grid. So at the moment, 100 pixels, a little bit small. We're gonna go for 1,000. Again, I like to keep these values the same, but the more pixels you add to your size, the bigger the physical size of your grid will be. If you add more horizontal and vertical dividers, it's gonna add more, like more grid, more segments. So if you want a really simple grid, bring these values down. If you want a really complex grid that's gonna have a lot more detail, bring them up. Remember, just keep them the same. Okay, so once you're done, click OK, and it will create a grid. And we're gonna pop this in the center, because if I don't put it in the center, it's gonna, it's gonna drive me mad. There we go, that's pretty good. So at the moment, this is just a flat two-dimensional grid, no isometricness happening here whatsoever. Now, the next thing we need to do is select the grid and then go over to the transform panel. So you can see I'm on CC 2019. I've got the transform panel here as part of my property inspector. If you're on an older version of Illustrator, let's say CS6, just go up to window, down to transform, and you have the transform panel here and you can dock this wherever you like as part of your workspace, or you can just pop it up here. I think I'll leave mine just up here in the corner. And if I click on this, we can hide some of those extra options. So I have my shape selected. And what I'm gonna do is go over here to the width and the height. Now I wanna make sure that this link is broken. We don't want the 
proportions of our width and height to reflect each other if we change one. So if this is linked together and I adjust the height, the width will adjust proportionally. We only want to affect the height. So let's just make sure that link is unlinked or broken as the term is that I like to use. And in the height box here, we're gonna select whatever value you've got. I've got a thousand pixels and we're gonna type 86.6 zero two and then we're going to add a percent sign after and press return now it's quite important it has to be this exact value for all the isometricness to line up you'll see what i mean in a moment so press return and you can see the height of our grid becomes uh, considerably smaller well not considerably but a little bit smaller and what we're going to do next is go down here just below we have an option called shear. Now this can also be thought of as like skew, essentially where you kind of distort something. And what we're gonna do is in here, type minus 30 and press return. And you'll see it does that. Okay, we're getting there. Next, what we're gonna do is go into the rotation alongside and type 30 and press return. And there you go. We can see that we now have an isometric grid. Now I would recommend doing it in this order, reduce the height by 86.602%, shear by minus 30 and then rotate by 30. If you do it in any other order, there is a chance that your grid won't look like this and it will go a bit wrong. So just follow that order. And we now have our isometric grid and we're finished with our transform panel. So we can close that down. Now the good thing about creating this ourselves using the rectangular grid tool is this is actually an object in Illustrator. So we could select this now. We have our black stroke selected. We could go up to window, down to guides, and we can actually go make guides and it will actually make a set of guides out of this and they behave in the same way that guides normally do. So we could go back up to view, go down to guides. We've got the shortcuts here to turn them on or turn them off. And I've forgotten what they are. There we go. Um, but we don't actually want to do that. We don't want them as guides because well, I like to have them on their own separate layer. So we'll go back a few steps. We'll go edit, undo, select this. I can now go and pick my own color for the guide. So we could go for red or whatever. I'm just gonna keep it nice, bright blue, something very cyan-esque. So very similar to what I'm used to. And then if I go to window, down to layers, it brings up the layers panel. You can see I have mine docked over here. And I'm gonna go and create a new layer. So. On this first layer, this layer one, I've got my grid already. So we'll just call this grid, press return. And then what I can do is I can actually lock this by clicking in the space alongside. But before that, I'm actually gonna reduce the opacity. So I can just click on this object, go back to my property inspector, click here on opacity, or just actually just click here instead, a lot easier. And just drag that down to let's go for like 20%. So there we go, we have our isometric grid. It's really, really faint. So it's not gonna to be too distracting when I'm actually creating something isometric. Yeah, the lines are quite thick as well. So I'm gonna bring the stroke down to 0.25. So it's a lot more similar to my guides, really, really thin. So it's just not that intrusive. It doesn't get in the way of my actual isometric design work that I'm gonna create on top of here. So we've got the grid, we've reduced the opacity. The layer is looking great. Now we don't wanna select this by mistake. So as I said, we're going to lock that by clicking in this space. And now I'm gonna go on to layer two, and I'm just gonna give it a name, my design, and then my design is gonna go on top of the isometric grid. Now, if you want the grid on top visible at all times, you can just select this layer and just drag it above if you like. It's entirely up to you. But I guess, I guess it's time to test it now and see if the grid works. So uh, we, have our, we have our my design layer selected. We'll just grab the pen tool, pick a different color that isn't blue. So we'll go with black. Let's bump up that stroke, make it nice and thick. And remember we turned off snap to pixel. So it should, should if I've done it correctly, snap to the points, which is where the horizontal and vertical dividers intersect, which is of course throughout the entire grid. So now, oh wow, that is way too thick. Let's, uh, <laughs> let's bring that down, there we go. And this makes it incredibly easy to just snap things together and create something isometric. I don't know what this is. It's probably looks quite terrible. Now you can see there, if I just zoom in, that one was, I think a little bit off. 
So I definitely recommend zooming in and just making sure that it snaps. So you can see there it kind of snaps to this path, but I want to make it snap so it comes up with intersect because that's where the lines are intersecting. So those are the points I want to snap to. So just make sure that you are snapping to those points. And something else that helps with this, I've got mine turned on by default. Just make sure you go up to view, down to smart guides. You're definitely gonna want to have those turned on. All those pink guides that keep popping up that help me line things up, those are your smart guides. And smart guides plus snap to point just make creating things on this isometric grid incredibly easy. But there we go. That's how to create an isometric grid in five, well, no, 6.92 seconds, or as we've just done there, like a, a number of minutes. But I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Guys, if you've got any questions, you know what to do, drop those down below. But as always, like this video if you enjoyed it. Take care and I'll see you next time.